our forests, a major resource in British Columbia. And since they are a renewable resource, they can be sustained indefinitely if they're managed wisely. Not only are they a commercial resource, but they contribute to the quality of the environment and to the enjoyment of everyone. Considering only the economic value, British Columbia's forest industry brings in six billion dollars a year to this province. Wood from our forest keeps the paper and lumber companies alive and it provides employment for thousands of British Columbians. In 1976, over 85,000 people worked in our forest industries and it's estimated that including families and service industries, nearly half the people in BC depend on the forests for their standard of living. Forests have always faced two major threats, fire and pests. Fire spectacular and a recognized danger. But each year, a much greater volume of tree growth is lost to pests than to fires. In the Fraser River area, one of the greatest threats comes from the western spruce budworm. Through less than two months, approximately 5,000 budworms defoliated this single Douglas fir crown. The western spruce budworm follows a yearly life cycle from egg to larva, through pupa to adult moth. Hatching in late July or August, the young larvae, without feeding, spin silken shelters in twig and bark crevices, and they remain there until the following spring. In early spring, the larvae molt and emerge to mine the previous year's growth while waiting for this year's growth to start. When it does, the damage begins. The young larvae mine into the developing buds, gorging themselves on the new needles. When most of the bud is destroyed, the larva then moves off to feed on other buds that have now flushed. The result is a rapidly growing area in which the tops of the Douglas firs, turning brown in color, stand out amongst the rest of the forest. During the five to seven weeks of feeding, the budworm larva grows tremendously. When the new needles are eaten, the old needles are attacked. By July, feeding is completed. The budworm enters a pupal stage, remaining there for about 10 days. There emerges a small, harmless-looking moth. Little would anyone suspect its potential power of devastation. Male and female mate, and a few days later, the first batches of eggs are laid. The August night air can carry the female moth far and wide to spread the rest of her 200 eggs in new locations. So another cycle begins, with further damage in the following year. In the Fraser Canyon, some trees have been attacked five times. The rings on this Douglas fir show two attacks, with considerable loss in diameter growth each time. Extensive damage also occurs in the crown or treetop where budworm larvae can prevent the whole year's growth in height. After an infestation collapses, the tree recovers at less than normal growth rate for a number of years. Some trees, subjected to three or even four attacks, have lost up to 50% of their usable volume. So far, very few trees have died, but the yearly loss of height and diameter growth may have a serious effect on the economic value of the tree. In the Fraser River area, the present infestation has lasted nine years, longer than any other. It's presumed that it will eventually collapse through unusual weather conditions, disease, or parasites. The British Columbia Forest Service and the Canadian Forestry Service have combined efforts to monitor the present budworm outbreak, as well as threats from other types of pests. Samples to show population trends and densities are taken from the ground and also by helicopter. In 1976, attacks by the budworm covered 475,000 acres. By late 1977, this had spread to 603,000 acres. The major increase was in the Fraser Lillooet area where the infestation covers 585,000 acres, 55% more than a year before. Except in isolated instances, the infestation does not usually come down below the 1,500 foot level. Within the budworm infested area, there are a number of communities which depend almost exclusively on the forest industry for survival.
In turn, the mills depend on the surrounding forests for their wood supply. The forest in which loggers work are on steep, mountainous slopes. It's tough slugging to get just one tree out. There's an average of 20 cunits an acre being harvested. In mature growth, more accessible areas, this volume could be at least doubled. There's the difference. It costs a lot of dollars to get a tree to a mill in the Fraser River area. Because of these problems, low yield per acre and high costs, the mills say they are only marginally economic. A reduction in wood supply, whether as a result of the budworm, other pests, major fires, could result in fewer jobs. In turn, the economic ripples will be felt throughout communities in that area. Given these problems, what should be done about the western spruce budworm? Predators, parasites, and other native control agents have not succeeded in suppressing the current outbreak. Attempts to reduce the budworm population by introducing naturally occurring virus diseases have not been successful either. And the present cycle is not expected to die within the immediate future. Maybe we should do nothing. In this mountainous district, some of the stands can be salvaged. However, the remaining trees will still hold the larvae, which can spread again to other stands. Trees defoliated by the budworm increase the danger of fire, and the forest floor drying out because of more sunlight getting through becomes a more volatile fuel. By doing nothing, we also have to take into account the long-term effect of reduced timber yield in the Fraser Valley area. The alternative is to kill the budworm by chemical spraying from the air. Whether this should be done or not is one of a limited number of control options available to the land manager. Over the years, man has increasingly interfered with nature. Plagues and famine, which used to decimate whole populations, have been abolished in many parts of the world. Chemicals are used extensively for the control of pests and diseases in agriculture. In fact, in British Columbia, the Ministry of Agriculture recommends carbaryl, one of the chemicals effective against the budworm, for spraying against specific pests in a wide range of vegetables, fruits, and grains, including oats, corn, grapes, apricots, pears, tomatoes, potatoes, and cucumbers. Spraying costs money for materials, for men, for helicopters, Although it is effective, it also has to be economically justified. The spray program is reviewed each year in the light of changing conditions. Meanwhile, more research is being done to understand why budworm infestations rise and collapse and on the long-term impact of the budworm on both the quality and the quantity of wood from the attacked trees. Methods of control other than chemical spraying are also being studied. They include viruses, insect growth regulators, and sex attractants. Much of this work is in the experimental stage. The only known effective method of control is by chemical spraying. Insects and diseases cause more damage than fire. Each year they kill an estimated $370 million worth of timber in British Columbia. And one of those pests, the western spruce budworm, could be a threat to people's livelihood in the Fraser Canyon. The final decision on how to deal with the budworm will have a profound effect on the infested forest area for many years to come. Uh -huh.